Okay, so I recently bought off eBay for just under £40 a Raspberry Pi 4 1 gig. Now I've never had the 1 gig model before. I started off with the 4 gig and uh, I've got several 2 gigs and an 8 gig model. And uh, I just wanted to see how well this runs operating systems. It came with this 16 gig noobs card, uh, so I might have a look at that as well. But initially I think we're going to try uh, Twister OS on it. Let's switch over to screen capture. So I'm on my 8 gig Pi at the moment uh, and if I go in the web browser and scroll down. So I had this comment from Pradjot Pachur. Hello Lee, I opened up my Raspberry Pi on Twister this morning. It had an update change log version 2.1.2. So let's have a look at that. But instead of installing it and updating it on my 8 gig Pi, I'm going to switch over to my 1 gig Pi and try it all on that. So let's shut down. And let's open it up. So although this was discontinued, uh, it's still brand new box stock. It's always a shame that you have to open these boxes up. Oh, and that didn't open very well. Uh, so, I've never seen the 1GB Pi before. Obviously, it's going to look very similar to all the other ones. So, this is, I guess, a 4... Yeah, this is my 4GB Pi. And as you can see, they do look very similar. I'll spin it around as well. So, I've got to remember which one's which. So, this is the 1GB Pi. So, I'm using the official case because it is super easy. Uh, so, you literally just slot it in. Um, I also use the Pi Moroni fan shim, which I'm going to put inside there, just because it's a bit quieter. I wonder if this one works, actually. This might be a bit too high. Uh, oh yeah, this one won't work because the power adapter will stick out the back. That's the one I had in my recent uh, rack mount video. So let's pop my Pi Moroni fan shim on, uh, because that fits nicely into this case just over the end pins. Uh, and as I showed in a previous video, I put an SD card in here, uh, which I'd cut down because it fits in the case, but it spreads the pins out. It might work because these are brand new pins, but uh, I found my Pi Moroni fan shim doesn't always make a great connection. And here is my cut down SD card. So let's pop that in between the pins and that spreads them out. Makes a great connection, but also importantly fits into this case. So let's pop that on and now it's ready to go. So let's transfer everything over. So HDMI cable, USB-C. Uh, this is the SSD drive that I'm using. So I'm using a Kingston 240 gig SSD drive that's got Twister on it already. And pop my keyboard adapter in. Oh, the USB slots are really tight. Let's try it in that USB 2 one. I sometimes find the USB 3 one um, yeah, that is super tight. I guess they're like that when they're brand new. So no action yet. I'm just going to try unplugging the HDMI cable, plug it back in again, because that sometimes brings it to life. Of course, the bootloader could be really old in this, so let's switch it off, unplug this, and let's try booting it up and see if we get any splash screen or anything. Okay, so still nothing. Uh, so I'm going to switch it off and try and boot from an SD card. And I've got Raspberry Pi OS on this Samsung Evo card. Okay, that's booting up now. So it must have a really old EEPROM. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so I checked one of my old videos to check how to do this to see what version it is because I haven't had to do this for ages. So RPI-EEPROM-Update. And you can see here, bootloader update available. Current version is the 1st of January 1970, uh, which is a bit strange. Uh, but uh, the latest version that's due is the 6th of July. So let's apply that update. So sudo raspi-config, advanced options, bootloader version, latest. So yes, and OK, and down to finish, and yes to reboot. OK, so on USB 3, this doesn't seem to boot properly with my CSL cable. And my CSL cable works with my 4 gig and 8 gig Pi 4 absolutely fine. Uh, now what it does is it just keeps going through and doesn't properly recognize it. So if I power it down, plug it into the USB 2 socket and then switch it on, it starts Twister OS absolutely fine. As you can see here, it started up on USB 2, same cable. So which is a bit weird because uh, it definitely works with USB 3 on everything else. So if I, if I do it on my 8 gig Pi now, so let's shut this down and switch this off, plug everything into this one. And I know the update is taken because uh, it obviously shows up on the display that it's been updated. 
So switch back on. So this is the eight gig Pi now. Okay, so you can see it's all booted up. So now let's try it on my four gig Pi. And my four gig Pi is uh, an original one. So here's my four gig Pi. Let's plug that in. And it reads the boot nice and quick. There you go. So that's all started up on the four gig Pi, which is my original one, which I bought on day one. And let's switch this back into the two gig Pi. Can't read config.txt, although it has started to boot now. So it got off the boot screen, but it's stuck at this stage. So I need to switch it off because I do have uh, other USB 3 SATA cables. So this is uh, a USB, this is my first ever USB 3 SATA cable, which I already had before I even had my Pi uh, and has always worked fine. So let's plug that one in and switch on. And you can see Twister works absolutely fine with this cable. So this CSL cable uh, has worked with everything else before. Uh, it's been really compatible and is still working with my 8 gig and my 4 gig. Just the 1 gig Pi seems to be more fussy for whatever reason. Anyway, now we're booted up, we can at least use the operating system. Okay, so I've been playing around with this and uh, the web performance is definitely nowhere near as good on the 1 gig Pi, uh, which is a bit of a disappointment. I was figuring that maybe it was going to be okay because uh, obviously Twister OS runs on a Pi 3 uh, and it's generally the 64-bit operating systems that people say you need more RAM for. The 32 gig ones tend to be a bit more forgiving. But if I call up uh, the Chromium browser, okay, so the mouse has become really unresponsive and uh, it can't handle this PDF file. Now, I'm guessing this probably could be quite big. I suppose I can try the arrow keys to see if I can skip through the pages. So just press the arrow key and nothing's happening. Uh, and this works absolutely fine on the 8 gig Pi. Yeah, Chromium is not good on one gig of RAM, even on a 32-bit operating system. You can see it's struggling really, really badly. Okay, so let's boot up a 2 gig Pi. I've got a DeskPi Pro case here. Let's unplug the USB so I can show you it's a 2 gig Pi and switch that on. So it'll go to the bootloader. So you can see at the top here, Pi 4 Model B 2 gig. So let's plug in USB 3 and let's get this booted up. You can see it recognizes it straight away. And I'm plugged in down the bottom here. There you go, that's booted up absolutely fine. Okay, so I've been playing around with this quite a bit. Uh, this is another day now uh, because I ran out of time. It went in a different direction because of the cable not working and everything. Uh, but this is the two gig Pi. And uh, if I flick through this PDF, uh, I've got the same tabs open as I had before. I've had multiple tabs open on the two gig Pi and it copes with it really well. Uh, and the reason I've got this PDF and the reason I was putting this in this video is because it was the one that announced the two gig Pi. And this was back in March 2020 uh, when this story broke. So let's go into the story and have a look. There's some interesting bits in here. So say hello to the new entry point for the family. Raspberry Pi 4 comes with 2 gig and we say farewell to the 1 gig model. So you can see here when it was launched, there was a 1 gig, a 2 gig and a 4 gig Pi. And it says, thanks to falling RAM prices, Raspberry Pi 4 1 gig is being retired. Raspberry Pi 2 gig is now the new entry point to the family. And they basically put the 2 gig Pi at the same price the 1 gig Pi used to be, so $35, so an absolute bargain. Now further on down in the story, there was this bit that says how much RAM you've got. So in terminal we can type free dash H. So I figured that would be quite a good thing to do. Free dash H. So the key here is the available RAM is 776 megabytes. Uh, and obviously if this was the one gig Pi, it already wouldn't have enough. So yeah, that's basically proven it. And they interviewed Evan Upton in this story as well. It's a good story. It's worth having a read through. I'll put a link in the description to it. And they talk about the original Raspberry Pi Model B, uh, 700 megahertz with 256 of RAM. And it's about 40 times more powerful on the Pi 4. And I've done several videos on the Pi 4 2 gig model and I really like it and I did uh, several sort of split screen tests and things like that and it does perform really well um, but the 1 gig one obviously not good for an operating system but there's loads of things that you use a Pi 4 and 1 gig of RAM is plenty for various different maker things that you would do with it. But I figured I'd have a quick look at gaming on it. Uh, but I also wanted to go through uh, with my cable. So let's come back out screenshot. So the one thing I wasn't expecting from this video was definitely the uh, cable issue. So this cable, this CSL cable, which works with so many different operating systems and has been great. It's the main one I recommend for the Pi uh, as a USB to SATA cable. It is brilliant. Uh, 
this Dynamo one is one I've had for ages. I bought it a long, long time ago and uh, it works fine. It's nearly as fast as this. I've done speed tests on both of them. But uh, for some reason, this cable doesn't boot with the two gig and the one gig Pi, but it's absolutely fine with both of my four gig Pis and also my eight gig Pi. So that is a really weird um, thing that came out of this video. So if anybody can recommend what USB SATA cable they use, what's the most compatible, especially if you use it with a one gig or two gig Pi booting and operating system, uh, I need to find out if there's another one that works basically right across the board because these Dynamo ones uh, are hard to get and it's an old cable anyway uh, and they do different variations of them. So yeah, if people can recommend in the comments what cable to use. Uh, but let's have a go at a bit of gaming back on the one gig Pi. So let's go back over to this one. Okay, so I thought I'd try 128 gig Batacera which I've got on a micro SD card. Uh, this was in a recent video I did and it was really good. So let's see if we can launch some games on this. Oh, and it's crashed on this screen. Right, okay, I'm gonna try RetroPie. Okay, so this is loaded up pretty quick and it looks like it's skipping through the menus all right. So let's see if it launches a Dreamcast game. Okay, this is Sega GT and this seems to be running absolutely fine. The audio sounds great and uh, yeah, no complaints here. Okay, so this is Toy Story N64 version and uh, this seems to be fine speed-wise. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be suffering from only having one gig. Okay, so GTA by City Stories doesn't seem to work on my one gig Pi. Uh, it doesn't seem to be enough memory to run it. And uh, it works absolutely fine on my two gig Pi. So I'm back on Twister OS, uh, which is where I started the video. Uh, what I was going to do was update it and uh, basically show some of the changes. So let's have a look at the web browser. But I have to say, overall, the experience of the 1 gig Pi 4 hasn't been a good one. And uh, I, so I started my Pi 4, uh, I had a 4 gig model, it was my first model. And uh, after quite a while, I bought a 2 gig just to do some tests and some comparisons. And the 2 gig I actually found to be really good. But the 1 gig, after having the use of the 4 gig, the 2 gig and the 8 gig, the 1 gig's just really disappointing. And uh, there's a lot of things that it can't run. That said, obviously it's the same price as the two gig model when it came out. So uh, it probably is just a good thing that it went away. Uh, although people were disappointed, I saw in forums where people were saying that they only needed one gig to do particular projects and things like that. I get it, that's fair enough. But if it was gonna cost the Raspberry Pi Foundation about the same sort of money to produce a two gig or a one gig, I think it's a good thing that the one gig model disappeared. So let's have a look on the website and see uh, what it says about the changes. So version 2.1.2, change log. So numerous Twister 11 theme improvements. So that's the Windows 11 skin, which is what I use. I actually quite like this skin. Uh, I especially like it when you press the Windows key, uh, how everything comes up and it's nice big icons and things like that. I think it's, it's just a really, really good system. Uh, so, updated all themes to be XFCE 4.16 compatible, updated Commander Pi to version 1, full edition image only, uh, and this is the full version, not the light version of Twister OS I'm running here, added XFCE 4 goodies, full edition image only. So, let's run the update, and to do that, I'll close down the web browser because I don't want to do too much on a 1 gig, uh, and press the Windows key, and uh, type in update. And here you can see Twister OS Patcher. See update and install. Okay, so that's all updated uh, and rebooted now. And uh, yeah, I think maybe this bar looks a bit better. Some of the icons look like they've got a bit more polish on them. Uh, obviously because it's now XFCE 4.16 compatible, uh, that's going to be better for performance. And let's have a look at the Commander Pi version. Uh, so this is Commander Pi on here. Oh, it says updates available. So let's hit OK. Just thinking about it. And Commander Pi, if you haven't used it before, it's a very easy way of overclocking. You can also switch the kernel from 32 to 64 bit for more compatibility with various things. Uh, CPU detail, bootloader information. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have done that update. Let's hit about here. Yeah, so it's on version 0.7.2. So let's do check for updates. It doesn't seem to be doing an update. Is this something else that's not been working on my one gig Pi 4? 
Anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there. But uh, yeah, really pleased always when Twister gets an update. It's always improving. It's a great operating system. There is so much in it. And I really love the way that it works. And, uh, you know, things like just searching for apps and things are just, I think, better on this than anything else. So let me know in the comments what you use your 1GigPi4 for. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.